Making its first on-screen appearance in the Star Trek The Next Generation episode Sins of the Father, the planet Kronos is the homeworld of the Klingon species and the capital of their star empire. Klingons are a hominin-type alien species most easily identified by their cranial ridges and grumpy dispositions. Over 3.84 billion are said to reside on Kronos, with countless more spread throughout their claimed space. The planet Kronos is a wet terrestrial 1.53 times larger than Earth and 2.88 times more massive. It has a surface gravity 23% higher than Earth's and a mean density of 4.43 grams per cubic centimeter, which is surprisingly realistic for a science fiction planet. The planet's exact atmospheric composition is unknown, but given that humans are able to survive on Kronos for extended periods of time, indicates that it possesses an oxygen concentration close to 20% and a pressure probably between 70 and 110 kilopascals. The atmosphere is known to be highly polluted, with smoke, dust, and industrial waste gases clouding the planet's stratosphere and giving the planet its characteristic green hue when viewed from space. Near the surface, smog is commonplace, with low-lying areas often reduced to toxic wastelands by industrial and urban runoff. Like Earth, Kronos has a surface water coverage of 70%. However, unlike Earth, Kronos' continental landmasses are not dispersed around the globe, but instead are clumped together in a single, Pangaea-like supercontinent. Unfortunately, this leads to a number of issues for the Klingons. The large supercontinental landmass produces high tectonic stresses in the planet's crust, which lead to frequent earthquakes and strong seismic events. Likewise, having so much of the planet covered in water allows for the formation of very large and powerful cyclonic storms, which devastate the single continent when they inevitably make landfall. However, the moisture from these storms rarely makes it past the coastal regions, leaving the interior of the supercontinent a harsh and barren desert. Compounding the dangers posed by Kronos' weather is the planet's obliquity. Though the planet's precise axial tilt is never given, it is stated to be quite high, which likely places it at or above 35 degrees. This leads to high seasonal temperature variations between its northern and southern hemispheres and produces exceptionally sweltering summers and bitter winters, which last, on average, around 140 days each or 120 local days, given the planet's 28-hour synodic rotation period. During the winter season, it is likely that the higher latitudes see the advancement of polar ice caps and large-scale glaciation. During the summer season to follow, these ice caps would melt and retreat, leading to meltwater flooding of the region. Though how impactful this would be to Klingon civilization would depend on how the supercontinent is positioned relative to the planet's poles. Adding to the calamity of life on Kronos, numerous superheated plumes of magma rise from the planet's deep mantle and create volcanic hotspots that lead to widespread basaltic lava flows and leave behind expansive magma chambers and lava tubes, which snake through and undermine the planet's crust. Occasionally, these hotspots melt the surrounding crust and form rhyolitic caps, which seal the magma underground and allow for immense pressure to build up, eventually failing as a supervolcanic eruption that devastates tens of thousands of square kilometers and negatively impacts the global climate. If there is any silver lining to be found here, it is that these hotspots erupt lava that is enriched in iron, magnesium, and other useful metals, possibly fast-tracking the metallurgical revolution of the early Klingons. Kronos is orbited by one moon, named Praxis. Praxis was once a major moon of the planet and large enough to be spherical. It was a key energy production site of the Klingon Empire, and scattered across its surface were thousands of mining outposts that housed millions of workers, primarily exporting dilithium crystals and helium-3, presumably. But due to overmining and insufficient safety precautions, more than 60% of the moon was obliterated in a cataclysmic explosion that occurred in 2293. What remains of Praxis, now more accurately referred to as a minor moon, resides in a field of rocky debris that encircles the planet, known as the Praxis Belt. 
The destruction of Praxis caused a major depletion of Kronos' ozone layer, which led to heightened ultraviolet exposure and atmospheric mass loss. The Praxis Belt now subjects Kronos to frequent and often dangerous meteor showers. Kronos has been estimated by some to orbit its parent star in 567 days, or 486 local days. However, what star Kronos orbits is not known. Canonically, it is said to reside within 90 light years of Earth in the direction of the star Omega Leonis, but unfortunately this does not narrow it down much as dozens of stars match that criterion. Some sources state that Kronos is the second of five planets in the system, but no further information is available concerning those planets. So how does Kronos measure up as a science fiction planet? Density is a critically important property to consider when crafting science fiction planets, but most authors don't know this and tend to arbitrarily choose their planet size and surface gravity without realizing that these two properties are related. In doing so, they often unknowingly give their planet an unrealistic density. Chances are that the authors that pinned Kronos' size and surface gravity likewise did so arbitrarily. But in this case, it happened to place the planet's mean density into a very realistic range, so plus one point. Nothing is stated about Kronos' orbit aside from rumors of its orbital period, therefore zero points. It is reported that the green tint of Kronos' atmosphere was added by Star Trek visual effects creators to make the planet seem more alien, with a pollution explanation for this coming sometime thereafter. But this is barely an explanation, and certainly not a good one. It is not at all clear what type of pollution could lead to this spectrum of light scattering, and theoretically, if pollution builds up in a planet's atmosphere to the level that it is readily visible from space, odds are it has already poisoned to death all of the life forms on the planet. Additionally, Kronos's reported obliquity would have serious consequences for whatever climate it possesses. A planet's obliquity influences its seasonal temperature variations, and its orbital period dictates how long its climate must tolerate the temperature extremes brought on by those seasons. If one hemisphere of a planet remains very hot or very cold for too long, it can destabilize the climate and lead to a catastrophic runaway temperature event. Given how little we know of Kronos' other climate factors, it's not clear whether its 567-day orbital period is long enough to cause climate destabilization, but it's certainly too close for comfort. Negative one point. Although it is uncommon for a terrestrial planet to have any moons, and quite rare for one to have a large spherical moon, Kronos' single moon praxis is well within the realm of possibility. The moon exploding, on the other hand, is not. The amount of energy necessary to blow apart a planetary body is immense to a magnitude that is difficult to comprehend. There is no realistic way that Klingons could even produce that much energy, much less do so by accident. And there is not a strong enough energy source within the moon that can be unleashed by careless mining practices. But I'm still going to give it a positive score because this is supposed to be an analysis of how the moon is constructed rather than how it was destroyed. So, plus one point. No information is given for the star that Kronos orbits, so zero points. With a total of one point, the planet Kronos from Star Trek gets a D grade. As is common with planets from Star Trek, very little information exists about this planet. But what is there paints a picture of a very interesting world that I would love to see explored in more detail. But for now, my course is set for yet another alien world. I hope to see you there. Until next time, glory to the Empire. Kapla!